Hello, I'm Ian Vermeulen, an integration engineer. And I am Ryan McDaniel, a technical consultant, and we are from the Michigan region of McNaughton McKay Electric Company. Today we are going to talk to you about Rockwell Automation's Armor Power Flex Drive. To start, let's go over some of the key features of the new Armor Power Flex. The Armor Power Flex is planned to be able to support up to 20 horsepower motors as opposed to the Armor Start ST, which supported up to 5 horsepower. Like the Armor Start, the Armor Power Flex has hardwired safe torque off, integrated safe torque off, and integrated safety I.O. The Armor Power Flex is built in a NEMA 12 enclosure that has an IP66 rating for temperatures ranging from negative 30 to 55 degrees Celsius. The Armor Power Flex is shock and vibration resistant and is capable of maintaining these ratings in various mounting orientations. But when we zoom in, we can see the local lockable disconnect as well as the capability of pass-through power from the M35 three-phase power in and out connectors. The Armor Power Flex has an optional internal power supply seen here in the wiring diagram. Using the internal power supply negates the need to have a separate 24 volt power supply somewhere else to supply the control section of the drive as well as other devices that need 24 volts near the drive. Now let's take a look at the logic section of the Armor Power Flex located here. In the top left of the unit, we have two dual channel inputs and one dual channel configurable input or output. In the bottom left, we have a dual port gigabit ethernet port that can be used to daisy chain other devices near the Armor Power Flex. In the top right, we have three safety connections, four one channel inputs, one bipolar or one sourcing output. In the middle is an encoder feedback port that supports incremental, AQB or sine cosine feedback types. And in the bottom right, we have the ports for the optional internal power supply that was previously mentioned. Looking at the same section of the drive, we have keys along the top that can be used for local auto control or configurable function buttons. Just below in the middle, we have a drive fault status light and a reset button along with drive status indicators. If we remove this hood at the bottom of the logic section of the drive, we are able to access even more features. Under the hood, we have the IP mode selection wheel. This dial changes the first three octets of the drive's IP address, detailed further in publication 35UM001A. The three dials on the right set the last octet of the IP address. Below the mode selection switch is a dip switch that sets the encoder voltage to either 12 volts or 5 volts. And at the bottom are two replaceable 24 volt DC fuses. The middle section here houses the integrated PowerFlex 525. The heat sink has angled fins so the proper cooling can be achieved whether the drive is mounted vertically or horizontally. The heat sink surfaces are smooth and curved to make for easier cleaning as well. Now let's look at the power section of the drive. On the top of the lockable disconnect and the feed through power capabilities mentioned earlier, the Armor Power Flex has a QR code that can be scanned with your phone to lead you to directly to product information catered specifically to the part number of the scanned unit. The Armor Power Flex also has a secondary safety ground available. If we remove the cover of the power section of the drive, we gain access to some of the electrical components. Under the cover, we can see test points for the DC bus. Below these, we have the fuses for the EM brake. And finally, taking up the bulk of the power control section is the line side branch protection circuit. The Armor Power Flex also has a wide range of mountable accessories such as the pictured 50 watt dynamic resistor, impact guard, and splash shield, as well as the 100 watt standard duty dynamic brake, which is not pictured. Now on to Ryan to demonstrate the setup and programming with the Armor Power Flex add-on profile in Studio 5000. Here I have created a project using an L82ES processor and an EN2TR module in the rack. The L82ES has a gigabit Ethernet port built into it, which the Armor PowerFlex is plugged into. My laptop is plugged into the EN2TR module in the rack. The Armor PowerFlex IP address is already set up, so we don't need to go through that. To add a new module, we'll right click on the Ethernet, select New Module. Up top, we'll use the filter and we'll type in Armor P. That'll filter out all but the Armor PowerFlex. Once you select, then you'll hit the Create button down on the bottom right. 
Once the tab opens, you can define the device definitions. We'll start by giving it a name. Type in Armor Power Flex. Then we'll go down to the variant. It has two options, standard and safety. Power drive is a safety drive, so we'll select safety. Then we'll go to the power supply. Power supply has two options, internal and external. Ours is an external 24 volt DC supply, so we'll select external. Then we'll go to the drive rating. This is where you select the horsepower rating of the drive. Ours is a one horsepower drive. Then we'll select the brake. This is with or without EM brake. Our drive is with the EM brake. Then we'll go to the connection. This has three options, standard, standards, and safety, and safe only. We'll want to select the standard and safety. Then the Ethernet address will be a private network. And ours will be set to 192.168.1.68. Now we will accept the edits by clicking OK at the bottom of the tab. A warning will pop up asking you to accept the change of the catalog number and load the new data. Click Yes. It will then prompt you to inhibit the drive so you can execute a startup wizard once you're online with the drive. I will go ahead and select Enable and Continue to inhibit the drive. And down in the bottom right corner, you'll select the Create button. Now you'll have to close out the Add New Module tab. So now we'll save our project and download to the processor. Come up here, click there, select Download. My Ethernet path is already set up, so we'll go right into the PLC. This tab pops up, select the download, it'll start downloading. Once it's finished downloading, we'll select it to go into run mode. Say clicking yes. Now while online with the project, you can open up the drive properties and do a quick start. Now we can hit the quick start button. Once the wizard opens, it'll want you to confirm the drive needs to put itself into hardwire safe control. All Armor PowerFlex drives come with a red safety jumper and it must be plugged into one of the safety inputs on the drive. I'll plug it into the top, which is the safety input 0 and 1. Now that the drive recognizes it, you'll be able to reset ownership and or run the quick start. And the next step is where you can set up your motor nameplate data. I don't have a motor plugged in on this project, so I'll leave everything default and select Next. Now you can perform a rotation test. It's a default of 10 revs per second. So you can hit the jog button. You will see the velocity feedback ramping up to 10 revs per second. Once you let go of the button, you'll see the velocity feedback ramp down to zero. At this point, you can change the motor polarity from normal to inverted if the direction was not correct. We'll leave ours to normal. Again, I don't have a motor plugged in. Then we select the box to say the motor rotation direction is correct, and now select Next. This tab allows you to do a tune on the motor. Your two options would be a static tune or rotate tune. With the motor plugged in, I would prefer to do a rotate tune, but I don't have a motor, so I'll select the static tune so we can complete the process. Now keep in mind during this, you can get motor motion, so you want, might want to be decoupled from any load. So at this point, you can accept the test results or the default values or keep the original values whichever you'd like, and select Finish. I typically would accept the test results. Now that that is complete, remember when we started the drive, it is inhibited, and now we need to uninhibit the drive. Go to the Connection tab, unselect the Inhibit module box. Now apply at the bottom of the tab. Once this is applied, the drive will now go back to network safety configuration. 
You'll see it right up here, it'll change from hardwire to network. And at this point, you can remove the red safety jumper from the safety input. The drive should come up and be ready for operation. It's ready for the network STO bit to be turned on and now operate the drive through the status output command words. Thank you for watching this tech support video on Rockwell Automation's Armor PowerFlex drive. For more videos like these, please visit and subscribe to the McNaughton McKay YouTube channel.